At the end of lesson six, I showed you some really cool geometrically perfect crop circles in the flower of life form. Most people didn't like that, or care. So instead, I offer you this. This intense drawing was done by Leonardo da Vinci, proving that he actually studied the flower of life form. In fact, over 200 drawings of his were found, all studying different angles and proportions, complete with descriptions of each one. The editor of the book who published these lost drawings didn't really know what they were, so he just said this is how he came up with his gear inventions. Leonardo was able to invent such intricate inventions and designs because he studied divine proportion. Also, Leonardo was a master mason, and it's clear that he most likely got his original knowledge from them. Is the flower of life, among other things, the secret information that the masons have been keeping secret for the last thousand years? Today, I was going to look at spirals and sequences found all throughout the universe, which is pretty important, but at the last minute I decided to change it because I want to show you something else. Now, in the comments or end credits, depending on where you're watching this, I posted links to a TED Talks video by Garrett Lisi, a particle physicist who tells us of an amazing discovery in the scientific field. I want to show you and talk about his findings, and then we'll look at dimensions after that. Okay, so Garrett has discovered that by examining coral, they found that each coral head has thousands of different polyps. These polyps are constantly budding and branching into genetically identical neighbors. Through performing heat experiments on these polyps, they were able to find that every single polyp is part of a whole, a single unit of being, but each one is experiencing its own reality individually. From their findings with the coral, they were able to look at quantum mechanics. See, the mathematics of quantum mechanics shows us exactly how our universe works, and we see that everything in the reality is just continually branching into new possibilities, just like the coral. As humans, we are individually experiencing only one of these possibilities, much like the individual polyps. What physics is telling us is that everything comes down to geometry and the interactions between elementary particles. Things can happen only when things are perfectly balanced. So Garrett starts showing us some subatomic particles and the things that make up electrons and protons and neutrons. We always consider these to be the smallest particle, but we never think about what's creating them. Garrett demonstrates to us how the particles that create point particles really work. He shows that when you plot them out in how they move, this is what they look like. At the tiniest scales of the universe in how it works is very beautiful. Now look at this. This is one of the ways that these charges branch off from each other. As you can see, it flows in a hexagonal pattern, the same pattern that we found in the expanded flower of life. Then, if you rotate this pattern in six-dimensional charge space, you see it forms yet another pattern. Many of you will recognize this as the shape of the Star of David, but its true name is the Star Tetrahedron, which maps perfectly over the fruit of life. This entire pattern created by the particles is mapped across over precise places on a 200-dimensional spherical shape scientists have called E8, of which also has a geometric shape. By rotating that shape as well, you can see how there are nearly infinite possibilities as to how these elementary particles interact with each other. The details of the reality begin to take form. Now as this shape is rotating in eight dimensions, you can see a myriad of different patterns here. Look at this one in particular. This looks a lot like Metatron's cube, doesn't it? At the heart of particle physics is pure, beautiful geometry. By now, you probably can begin to see where sacred geometry falls into this. Where do these shapes originate? Do they just come into being at random? Or does the first shape come from somewhere else? In lesson six, we talked about the flower of life, the original perfect geometric symmetry that created the universe. This shape, as we learned, is not only the root of all mathematical proportion, light, the platonic solids, but is also the source of every musical system in the universe, including systems both used and unknown to modern man. It is also the source of energy patterns and, well, everything. It all comes from the flower of life. I believe this is what is at the heart of what's forming every subatomic particle formation, and it probably goes at least a few levels deeper than what Garrett is showing us. Now we can start talking about dimensions. These wheels are some of the oldest symbols known. The only places that they've been found is on the ceilings of certain very old Egyptian tombs. They are always found in sets of four or eight, and nobody knows what they are. Even the most famous Egyptologists have no idea, but this is actually proof that the Egyptians not only understood the flower of life, but they lived it. Today, I'm going to show you what these wheels meant, and in future lessons, we will go over the details of this unraveling. There's a lot to cover before we get there though. For the record, the unraveling looks like this. Yeah, it's a doozy. So on the walls with these wheels are drawings of seven people with animal heads. They're called kneaders, and each of them has an orangish red oval above its head. This is called the egg of metamorphosis. The kneaders are showing us a time when we go through a certain stage of resurrection, which is a rapid biological change into a different life form. Not the average type of resurrection, I know. As you can see here, they're changing directions 90 degrees, and in doing so, they're changing dimensions. See, the dimensional levels are separated by 90 degrees. Musical notes are separated by 90 degrees. The chakras are also 90 degrees. It's a number that continually appears. Probably at this point, we should get a common understanding of what dimensions are, like third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. What are we talking about here? Most people think of dimension in terms of time and space, the X, Y, and Z axis, with time becoming the fourth dimension. 
This is not what we are talking about. What we're seeing as the various dimensional levels has more to do with music and harmonics than anything else. A piano has eight white keys from C to C, which is the familiar octave, and in between there are five black keys. Together this creates what is called the chromatic scale, which is 13 notes, well actually 12, with the 13th being the first in the next octave. So from one C to the next is really 13 steps, not eight. This also correlates with the seven, eight, and 13 chakra system I mentioned in lesson two. Keeping that in mind, I wanna show you a sine wave. Sine waves correspond with light and the electromagnetic spectrum and the vibration of sound. We're all very familiar with this. In this entire reality we're in, every single thing is based on sine waves. There are no exceptions to this except for maybe spirit and void. Quantum physics and quantum mechanics looks at everything in the reality of one of two ways. You can look at anything, like the computer you're watching this video on, to be made up of tiny particles like atoms. Or you can forget about that idea completely and look at it as a vibration, a waveform, such as electromagnetic fields or even sound. If you look at it as atoms, the laws can be seen to fit that model. But if you look at it as waveforms, the laws can be seen to fit that model. Both of these systems come out of the flower of life, one being the one we just looked at, fruit of life to Metatron's cube and beyond, and the other being this beautiful mess of a picture. Just looking at it hurts my head. Everything in this world is a waveform, or can be seen as sound. All things, your bodies, planets, absolutely everything, are a waveform. If you choose this particular way of looking at reality, and then superimpose that view over the reality of the harmonics of music, we can begin to talk about dimensions. The dimensional levels are nothing but different base rate wavelengths. The only difference between this dimension and any other is the length of its basic waveform. It's just like a radio set. Turn the dial, you pick up a wavelength. It's the same with dimensions. If you were to change the wavelength of your consciousness and in doing so change all of your body patterns to a wavelength different from this universe, you would literally disappear out of this world and reappear in the one you were tuned in. It's been theorized that the base rate wavelength that we're currently living in is 7.23 centimeters. There's a few reasons for this. In a spiritual sense, the 7.23 wavelength is Om, the Hindu sound of the universe. Maybe that's why Oming is such a powerful tool in meditation. Not only that, but if you were to take 100 people and measure the distance between their eyes, the average length is 7.23. Same with the distance from the tip of our chins to the tip of our noses, and the distance across our palms and between our chakras. This 7.23 length is located throughout our bodies in various ways because we are emerged within this particular dimension. There's another reason as well. Bell Laboratories found this wavelength when they were setting up the microwave system around the United States. They found static in their system because they chose a wavelength just slightly longer than 7.23 for their system. In order to get rid of the static, they did something that we as a planet are still suffering from. They upped the power 50,000 times over what we would normally need, which created a very powerful field, so that the 7.23 wavelength would not interfere. It's for those reasons that I believe 7.23 is the wavelength of our dimension. As you go up in dimensional levels, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter, with higher and higher energy. As you go down in levels, the wavelength gets longer and longer, with lower and lower energy, more and more dense. Just as with a piano, there's a space between the notes, so that when you hit one note, there's a very definite place where the next note is. In this waveform universe we exist in, there's a very definite place where the next dimensional level exists. It's specific wavelength relative to this one. Most cultures in the cosmos have a basic understanding of this and understand how to change between dimensions. However, because of certain events that happened on Earth 13,000 years ago, we have all forgotten, but we're about to remember. So if we show each note in the chromatic scale as a circle, we have 13 circles. Each circle represents a white or black key, and the shaded circle at the end would be the 13th note that begins the next octave. This circle here represents the third dimension. This is where we are, and this circle next to it would be the fourth. In lesson three, we talked about channeling, and this is typically where channeled beings are. This is also where you explore when you are astral projecting or lucid dreaming. You'll notice now that the musical system goes upwards and downwards forever, octaves over octaves over octaves. Theoretically, this is how the universe goes too, an infinite spectrum of universes in both directions going upwards and downwards forever. I mean, come on, we thought our universe was big, but everything in our universe, as far as we can see, well, that's just this one dimension. You may have heard people talk about 144 dimensions and how 144 relates to other spiritual subjects. This is because there are 12 notes in an octave and 12 overtones between each note. 12 times 12 equals 144 dimensional levels. To be specific, there are 12 major dimensions and 132 minor dimensions within each octave, though in truth, this progression probably goes on forever. The diagram we've been looking at represents one octave. The 13 note repeats, and then there's another octave after that. Looks like I'm about done for the day. I wanna show you this. I was watching Ancient Aliens not long ago, and one of the natives who has communication with beings in higher dimensions told the man who was interviewing him that they have always been here, even right here where we're sitting right now, but you just don't see them. They're in a different frequency. And no one really got what he meant. So that's kind of a fresh perspective on that. 